my name is Garchon Pro, and I've been challenger since set 2. I recently qualified for the North American Regional Finals, where I will be joined with the 23 other best players in North America to compete for a slot at Worlds on May 12th through 14th. Now, as part of my preparation for this tournament, I need to make sure that I can play multiple different lines. If I'm in a position where I can play a unique comp that isn't super, super meta, but is still strong, I need to be able to play it as I'm going to be versus the best players in the region. What I'd like to talk about today is some of the best comps you can play in the current meta that aren't the meta comps. If you want to talk about like the S tier, top of A tier comps, go watch my previous video where I discuss how to play those. What I'm going to be talking about today is comps that are strong and can easily win lobbies, but that I didn't talk about in that video and aren't being played quite as much. So these are going to be very good if you can hit them, uh, but aren't going to be the meta dominant threats. But these are all still very good comps that I'm talking about in this video. All these can easily go first. They're all A minus or above on my tier list. Uh, so let's jump right in. Before we begin with the comps, I'd like to make two notes real quick. The first is that Spark is currently bugged. It does no damage. The magic resist portion is, still works perfectly fine, but the damage portion is completely gone right now. What this means is that you should not be slamming Spark stage 2, stage 3, as it's not going to be doing anything at that point in time. It's still quite good late game due to the fact that Magic Resist Shred is very strong late game, but honestly you should just be prioritizing Shiv instead, as Shiv is actually working completely properly right now. The other thing I'd like to talk about is something you may have already seen, and that's going to be the Shiv Morgana tech. Now, interestingly, Shiv actually procs Morgana's passive, which allows her to Sunder and Shred enemies. Now you may be thinking, okay, why do I need to have Shiv on Morgana? She already does the Magic Resist Shred, what's, what's the need for this? Well, the thing is, is that Shiv is going to hit multiple units on the front line. Okay, well, why Morgana? Well, she's also going to be penetrating the armor every time the Shiv procs on a unit. This is really good in certain compositions where you're running a AD carry and an AP carry. If you watched my last video, you would have seen I had a composition where we run Belveth plus Aurelian Soul, and Shiv Morgana is going to be very good in that, as Aurelian Soul is AP, Belveth is AD. In addition, I also talked about Gadget Team, where you run Nar plus Sona as your carry. Sona's AP, Nar is AD. Again, Shiv Morgana is going to be great in that comp. So if you have a composition that's mixed AP and AD damage, Shiv Morgana is what you should be looking for to play. All right, so the first comp I'd like to talk about today is Threat Flex. Now, if you watched my last video, you know that three of my S tier comps all involved mech. And the first one of those that I talked about, which I thought was the best, was playing Belveth plus Aurelian Soul dual carry with mech. But here's the thing, mech is extremely contested, Garen is like the most contested unit in the game right now, and there's only 12 possible Garens, 8 players, you do the math, right? You're not going to hit Garen every game. So what do you do if you want to play around Belveth and Aesol, but you can't manage to hit the mech? What you're going to do is you're going to play around threats. Now this version is a good bit worse than the mech version, I have this in A- tier as opposed to S tier, but if you upgrade these units it's going to be better than not hitting any mech units at all. So this is a great pivot option if you can't hit the mech. The core of this composition is going to be Belveth plus Aurelian Soul as our carry. Theoretically, you can run Samira as a carry over Belveth with 80 items as well. And then our primary frontliner here is going to be Aatrox. Aatrox is probably the second best forecast frontliner in the game, uh, so we can throw all our tank items on Aatrox. Itemization here, Aatrox items, he's going to like Warmogs a lot, and then plus two tank items. So Val is good, Dragon's Claw is good, Stoneplate is good, uh, Bramble is fine, Redemption is fine as well. And then we're going to put 80 items on Belveth. Belveth really wants to have one healing item. So BT is probably the best, but then Gunblade and Hand of Justice are very good as well. And then she wants two damage items. So Deathblade, Runons, Last Whisper, Infinity Edge, Giant Slayer, Titan's Resolve are going to be her best ones. You can also go with Guardbreaker, but I think Guardbreaker is a bit better on Aurelian Soul due to the way that Guardbreaker works. He's more likely to proc on a shielded unit. Belveth can also theoretically run Rapid Fire Cannon as another option or Rageblade if you're pretty down bad, although it's not the greatest. Aurelian Soul here, his best items are going to be Shoujin and Archangels, but you can also run Deathcap, Jeweled Gauntlet, Guardbreaker, Giant Slayer, and Gunblade as well as other options. You can even theoretically run Blue Buff on Aurelian Soul as well. In addition, if you have a Static Shiv, you can put this on the Morgana, which remember the Morgana talk, uh, tech I talked about earlier. Uh, she's going to shred the armor of the frontline and the magic resist if you get a shiv to her, so that's going to be better than building Last Whisper or Shiv, right? Because if you go like, let's say Shiv or Alliance Soul, Last Whisper, Belveth, you're having to spend two items, but if we just go Shiv Morgana, we're only spending one item, so Shiv Morgana is going to be best here. Morgana is just a great unit to run, so you want to run her. You're lacking a bit of frontline, so you typically run Ramus in this slot as well. The Janna, Urgot, Fiddlesticks don't necessarily have to be these units, they're just like the most natural flex units here. You could theoretically run Garen plus Shen for frontline over two of these if you want more frontline. You can also theoretically run like let's say Echo plus Alistar or Echo plus Leona for Aegis over these. You can also theoretically run Echo plus Syndra, should uh, be able to let you throw in some free units. 
You can also realistically just play any five cost here as well. Uh, so you can very easily also flex in Mordekaiser. I guess Nunu isn't that great here, uh, but Mordekaiser is definitely a viable option to play on this board as well. You also have the option of going double Belveth. Double Belveth is very good. Same thing with double Aurelian Soul. I have this positioning here a little greedy around the Janna. That being said, if you're worried about AoE, uh, what you can simply do is position something like this. The Belveth will walk outside the Janna and now your team is not clumped anymore. If it's rainy weather, you really only want to be putting Janna next to Aurelian Soul. Belveth doesn't benefit that much from rainy. But if it's windy, you may want to greed both of them. It just depends on the lobby. Sunny isn't the greatest. I typically don't even love frontlining my Janna, but if it's sunny, you could theoretically go something like this. Um, this makes you very AoE susceptible, but if you have like a Janna 2 with sunny weather, uh, it's a nice shield for your frontline if you do this. So keep that in mind. But yeah, there's a few other variations of units you can flex in. Of course, if you hit Samira but not Belveth, what you can do is go Samira over Belveth. So let's just put like some AD items on Samira. And then if you're running Samira, uh, you could just randomly run a Samira here with no sure shot. But another option of a variation you can do is you can run Shen here. So we throw Shen over like a random unit, let's say that, drop these, and then we can run Ultimate Ezreal, which, and then we can also run Sivir. This will give us three Infinite Team. This is quite good if you have a frontline Infinite Team hex. Uh, you can copy this Shen for some free frontline on this board. And then of course, if you're running the Shen, you may want to run like a Garen as well for some extra frontline. So this is another variation of the board you can do. I would call this more so Samira Flex than Threats Flex, uh, but the two lines kind of have a line blurred between the two of them. So a lot of times when you're playing Threat Flex, you end up playing Samira Flex as well, and your board ends up looking something like this. This is a solid board, uh, can definitely top for you. In terms of augments for this composition, Best Augment is going to be Threat Level Maximum, of course. The original board had seven threats on it. Of course, you weren't forced to play all seven threats, but that was the ideal board, so Threat Level Maximum, very good, a lot of free HP. Second Wind Exiles are just great augments in general. Scope Weapons is very good for Belveth Carry. It's your best augment in the game. Thrill of the Hunt is just very good with Belveth Carry as well. Celestial Blessing is going to be good in these dual carry setups, especially Belveth. If you have Celestial Blessing, you can forego a healing item on the Belveth. And Jeweled Lotus is just great in any multi-carry setup because it's going to buff all of them and make your team do a lot more damage. In terms of best hero augments here, the best four cost augment is typically going to be the Aurelian Soul augments. Extinction event is probably the best. Impact velocity is also good. I think Back for Blood, which is the Belveth carry augment, is another uh, acceptable option as well um, in four cost. At three cost, you typically want to go with the Morgana carry augment. The Morgana support augment, which is Gas Giant Slayer, is solid as well, but I think generally considered uh, the Morgana carry augment, I forget its name, is generally considered a bit better. Uh, just, just a bunch of extra free CC, so that's a really good option at the 3 cost slot. If you have an AD heavy lobby, you could of course go with the Rama support augment, uh, which gives your team a bunch of armor. At 5 cost, you can realistically go with any legend. Oh, and at 4 cost as well, you can also go with the Atrox support augment. Very good augment, just makes your team last quite a bit longer. This comp doesn't utilize any of the 5 cost augments that well. Your best bet is probably going to be Rising Tide, which is the Urgot support augment. You can dual buff your Belveth and Aurelian Soul, give them that free 50% attack speed. This is really good if you want to go for like a double Belveth carry setup. Uh, you could just throw like your proper AD items on the first Belveth, so like something like this. And then you can maybe even just throw like a Thief's Gloves on the second Belveth. Um, so let me find it. And you do a setup something like this. Rising Tide, give buff to both the Belveths, uh, and they're just going to be doing a lot of damage. You can potentially buff the Aurelian Soul as well, so that's probably the best 5 cost augment in this comp. So yeah, this comp is quite good at top 4 -ing. It's not going to win a lot of lobbies. Again, it is just weaker than the mech variation. If you can get the guarantee with mech, you usually want to pivot into that. But if you're unable to hit it, this is a great secondary option. All right, the next comp I want to go over is Heart Sona. This is a line that I think a lot of people aren't very good at playing. There's a lot of misconceptions around playing it. So the biggest misconception I see uh, about playing around hearts is that people prioritize the damage items. They prioritize the blue buff. They say you need blue buff to play this comp. That's actually just not true. What matters significantly more is tank items. In this comp, you want to have more tank items than, front than carry items. The reason for this is hearts is a scaling comp, right? The longer the fight goes, the more heart stacks you get and the more damage you're doing. What this means, of course, is the longer your frontline can survive, the longer the fight will go, and you're doing more damage. So weirdly enough, tank items actually make your board do more damage than damage items in this comp. Of course, you sometimes still want some damage items as well, so that way you can secure some kills, but you should always be prioritizing the damage items. If you're sitting here with a bunch of AP items and not tank items, you should consider playing the Spell Slinger line, which I discussed in my last video, but this is the line that's great to play if you have a lot of tank items and no damage items. Of course, the best damage item in this comp is going to be blue buff. Blue buff will always go on your Sona. 
uh, just because she's 40 mana, she's gonna give you those free heart stacks. But in this current board right here, what I have is I have the four hearts with Sona, Viego, Syndra, and Lee Sin. I typically don't like playing six heart. Lulu Pantheon just aren't that high quality of units, even if you have a heart plus one, which I, I don't even like heart plus one that much, honestly. I usually play this comp without the heart plus one. Uh, but even if you have a heart, the heart plus one, I would just drop uh, one of these units here. I wouldn't actually play six heart. If you have heart plus two, you can play six heart, but then you just play this board with two heart spats. So you're playing these four hearts right here. Then I have LeBlanc and Aurelian Soul. You don't have to run these units here, uh, but they're great secondary carries. They scale really well off of the AP. Uh, LeBlanc is just going to give Spellslinger along with Sona. She's going to give you some nice single target damage. Aurelian Soul is going to be really strong as well. A lot of times you end up dropping a LeBlanc. A lot of times you end up keeping her. It's somewhat game dependent. And then I'm just running the Alistar to give the Aegis plus the Ox Force. Currently Spark is bugged, so you probably don't want to go Spark on him. Probably something more like Dragon's Claw. Redemption is another solid option as well. Bramble's fine, although I don't love Bramble currently. So those are all solid options on Echo. I think Stoneplate is his best item due to the fact that he taunts units towards him, so you get really good Stoneplate value, so keep that in mind. Of course, if you have extra tank items, Lee Sin is very good as well. The longer Lee Sin lives, the more heart stacks he gives, so tank Lee Sin is very good. Of course, Echo doesn't have to be the tank in this comp. If you can get a Lee Sin 3, Lee Sin 3 as your tank will be a very good option as well. You can just move items over to him. Uh, in addition, another option is Aatrox, and you can just start putting your tank items on Aatrox. So for instance, let's say we have like Stoneplate plus Warmogs. The thing with Aatrox is his heal scales off of a his AP, uh, so he actually starts to get really tanky once he gets ramped up. And he the nice thing about Aatrox is he actually does a decent amount of damage too in this comp. So he kind of acts as like a, a frontline tank carry. Uh, the problem is he's a little less reliable than something like Echo, but if you can get him going, he's really, really strong. So Aatrox is a great option in a heart board as a frontline. And then another option outside of the Lee Sin is you can actually run Annie as a frontliner as well. Again, her shield scales off of her AP, so you can throw your tank items on Annie. And then in a board like this, what you may opt to do is drop the LeBlanc for Fiora and play for Ox Force, make your frontline really tanky. So this is another variation of the comp as well. In this variation, you can also just run tank items on Lee Sin and just play this board here it is another completely viable option. Aurelian Soul and LeBlanc are great secondary carries here. Sona is actually usually what I don't primary carry. I would say I usually primary carry the Aurelian Soul or the Blanc more than the Sona. Again, I always put my blue buff on Sona. Uh, other good items for her are gonna be Jewel Gauntlet. Archangels is okay, although not an amazing. Guardbreaker is pretty good. Giant Slayer is fine. But a lot of times I'll actually carry the Aurelian Soul of the Blanc. Aurelian Soul and the Blanc really both like Shojin. They really both like Gunblade in this comp because they're gonna be scaling a lot of AP. In addition to that, Giant Slayer is good, Guard Breaker is good, Jewel Gauntlet's very good as well. Archangels is fine on them as well. You typically don't love flat AP in this comp due to the fact that you're scaling a bunch of flat AP anyways, uh, but going like Archangels is, is honestly fine. That item's just really good in general. Shiv is also really good in this comp. If you can get a Shiv, build it. Of course, Spark is bugged right now, so Shiv is just a bit better. Get that Magic Resist Stripe because your entire team is dealing magic damage. Again, your character is either going to be an Aurelian Soul 2 or a LeBlanc 3 or Sona 3. Aurelian Soul 2 would be your default, but if you're sitting with a lot of Sonas or LeBlancs, uh, you can potentially go for the 3 star. That being said, I don't like sitting at level 7 in this comp. What I like to do with this comp is I like to push level 8 with my 2 stars, because the thing with the comp is you really want stall for it. So getting an extra unit in is really impactful. It lets you allow to fit this board a lot easier. And you're just going to get a bunch of extra free stall, which makes you a lot stronger. In addition to that, the board is actually decently stable on two star units. Again, Aurelian Soul 2 can be your carry, so you don't have to hit three stars. But again, Sona 3, LeBlanc 3, Lee Sin 3, Annie 3 are all potential options. When I play this comp, I like to roll really hard at 3-2, level 6, stabilize. This comp is probably the second best comp in the game at rolling at 3-2 after Kai'Sa. And then at 4-1, I like to roll down again to stay stable and then go level 8. This comp tempos pretty well, so you want to be playing this comp with a strong board in stage three and stage four. In addition, if you have a good admin, the good admins are gonna be HP scaling for your whole team, either start a combat or every five seconds, or mana every five seconds for your whole team is another great option. What you're gonna to wanna to do is let's just go back to the board I had originally, which I believe was Echo here with tank items. Uh, you're just probably gonna to wanna to drop the Alistar and play Blitzcrank. This is gonna give you Brawler with Lee Sin. Obviously Blitzcrank isn't the best unit in the game, uh, but Blitzcrank here is gonna be able to enable the admin. So if you have one of those two admins, this comp honestly goes for like an, from like an A minus tier comp to like an S minus tier comp. So really recommend playing it off one of those admins. Honestly, if I'm sitting here with like HP scaling for whole team admin with a Blanc at 2-1, I'm basically playing like hearts 80% of the time. And it's, it's very, very good from that position if you can start stacking that HP early. Another interesting one is if you have dynamic defenses, which is the Blitzcrank carry augment, you can actually go for Blitzcrank as your tank here. Uh, so you're probably gonna run and run something like Stoneplate plus Warmogs plus one. Again, could be any of those tank items I was talking about earlier. 
And the thing with this is Blitzcrank's ability actually scales off of his AP as well. So his damage reduction is going to increase with the more AP he has. So he actually makes a decent tank in this comp. Again, allows you to easily fit in that admin. In terms of good augments for this comp, Heart plus one is okay, although I don't love it. First aid kit's very good. You have a lot of healing and shields. Jeweled Lotus is very good. You have multiple carries. They're gonna, it's gonna allow them to do a lot more damage. I think XLs and Second Wind are very good. Again, you want the comp to uh, last as long as possible to scale up. So those uh, those augments just are gonna allow you to do that. I also think Ascension's a really good option here as well. All your damage is backloaded. So if you're doing most of your damage after 15 seconds anyways, Ascension is basically just a free damage buff for the entire comp. In terms of hero augments for this composition, at two cost, you can go with either Lee Sin augment. Cleansing Safeguard is actually pretty decent in this comp, even though the stats are bad. I think a lot of times people just don't know how to play this comp. They like go too hard into getting Lee Sin three. You should just fast aid on Lee Sin two typically. So Cleansing Safeguard is solid. Invigorate's honestly decent as well. At 3 cost, the best option is typically going to be Power Grid for Sona. If you have a lot of LeBlancs, you can potentially go Aim Assist. It's going to be less reliable, but if I'm sitting here with like 5 LeBlancs, I might just take Aim Assist, go for LeBlanc 3. It's going to be very good. At 4 cost, your best option by far is going to be Extinction Event, which is the Aurelian Soul Carry Augment. It's going to just increase his damage so much, he's just going to one-shot the board. Impact Velocity is probably solid as well. Uh, but Extinction Event is by far the best one you can hit. Partners in Crime, which is the Viego Support Augment, is okay, although I don't love it in this comp. Same thing with Chrono Break, which is Echo Support. It's okay, although I don't love it. At 5 cost, you're probably forced to take Empowered Reserves, which is the Singer Support Augment. I don't love it because you already have a ton of AP, but honestly, Empowered Reserves is really, really strong anyways. Uh, so you should be fine taking it in this comp. So yeah, this is a pretty solid comp. Uh, it's generally uncontested, so you can usually hit your units. And it's really strong at level 6, level 7, so even if you don't have the greatest opener, you can roll really hard at those levels and play this comp. And yeah, highly recommend it, especially if you have a good admin plus tank items. So speaking of hearts, the next comp I'd like to talk about is going to be Lulu Heart Reroll. The idea of this comp is we're going to be playing around Lulu 3 plus Pantheon 3 as our carry plus tank. Conditions to play this, Growth Spurt, which is the Lulu carry augment, is a very good option for this. Either Pantheon augment is also good. In addition, Preparation is another good augment to consider playing this, as well as Battle Mage is another great option. So if you have one of those options, plus Lulus and Pantheons, you can highly consider playing this comp. What you're going to do is you're going to roll to about 30 gold at 3-1, and then you're going to slow roll for the rest of Stage 3, staying above 50 gold, and then roll down at 4-1 if you need to, to hit Lulu and Pantheon 3. Of course, if you have a bunch of Lulus and Pantheons, let's say I'm sitting here with 8 Lulus and 8 Pantheons, you should just roll to 0. It doesn't make sense to greet it, uh, just try and hit those for that power spike. Luth Pantheon are going to be the most important units to 3-star in this comp. You can try and 3-star Malphite and Lee Sin as well. So it, this board here is just going to be 4 heart, 3 supers. This is your level 6 board. At level 5, you typically will just either take out the Sona or take out the supers. Either's fine. In terms of items for this comp, the most important item is going to be blue buff for Lulu. It's going to make her really good. Gunblade is also probably her next best item, keeps the front line actually very, very tanky, and her best damage item is going to be Jewel Gauntlet due to the fact that she's going to be scaling AP from heart. Giant Slayer is another great option, Guard Breaker is okay as well. Theoretically, something like Archangels or Death Gap is okay, although I don't think is that great. Lulu is somewhat item dependent in this comp, so you kind of want to greed the correct items. Pantheon here, he actually scales really well off of Magic Resistance due to the fact that it buffs his damage. Uh, so Stoneplate and Dragon's Claw are two of his best items. Wormugs is also very good. You can also go with like Bramble as well, or Val, those are great options. Redemption is also fine on him. If you have spare tank items, they can of course go on Malphite or Lee Sin, and spare AP items can go on Sona. So this is going to be your level 6 board. As you push levels, you can theoretically just put in more hearts, so we can just put in Syndra Viego if we manage to get to level 8, and your board could look something like this. Uh, you could also just not play these units and instead play good flex units, so you could play like Aurelian Soul plus Morgana, because these are just great units. Um, great as well. If you can manage to get a Static Shiv, great to put on Sona in this comp. It'll allow your Lulu to do a lot of damage. I already talked about the best hero augments for this comp, which is going to be the Lulu and Pantheon ones. If you can't get those at 2 cost, you typically want to go for either Invigorate, which is the least in support, or the Malphite support augment. You can also go for Power Grid, which is the Sona carry augment, although it's not the greatest in this composition, uh, so I don't love it. There's no real great 4 cost options. Your best one is probably going to be Partners in Crime, which is going to be the Viego support augment to give you a bit of extra healing. And then at 5 cost, you can probably just take Empowered Reserves, which is the Syndra support augment. Again, similar to the other heart comp, I don't love Empowered Reserves in a setup like this due to the fact that you're already scaling AP, but Empowered Reserves is just a good augment in general and gives you a free Syndra, uh, so it is not that bad. In terms of the best non-hero augments, Preparation is very good, Battle Mage is very good, Jeweled Lotus is very good, of course you're going to forego the Jewel Gauntlet if you have Jeweled Lotus. 
And in addition to those, the best augment for this composition is by far Axiomark. If you have Axiomark, this comp goes from like a B plus A minus comp to a straight up like S, S plus comp. Axiomark is so strong. If you have a blue buff Lulu with Axiomark, she will just chain cast and one shot the entire enemy board. So if you can get Axiomark with this comp, it is an insane power spike. You will always insta click that augment. It is by far the best thing you can hit. The next comp I'm gonna talk about here is what to play when you have the poppy carry augment, which is bigger, better buckler. Now there's two variations of Bigger Better Buckler. There's one where you go like 4-6 Defender and you fully index into a Poppy Carry. And then there's also this Gadgetarian variation where you dual carry the Poppy and Lulu. In my opinion, this variation is a bit better. Your Poppy's gonna do a lot less damage than the other variation, but I think the quality of your board is just a lot higher, so it ends up being a lot stronger. What you're gonna do with this comp, again, is you're gonna roll to about 30 gold at 3-1 for Lulu and Poppy. You're trying to 3-star these and then slow roll level 50 for the rest of stage three and roll down at 4-1 for those three stars. Again, you really care about Poppy three, Lulu three. You can potentially hit Annie three as well, although it's not as important. At level five with this board, you're probably not running the Garen, you're probably not running the Nar, and you're probably not running the Nunu. So your board is probably looking something like these. A lot of times at level five, you may also just run a defender over Alistar as well. Uh, so that is good. A defender is good just because it buffs the Poppy's damage. So you can potentially run a defender over Alistar. This, of course, is going to be your ideal level 8 board, which is just going to be the 5 Gadgetine, uh, Garen for Defender, although it can theoretically be something else, and then Sona because she gives Spellslinger and Heart, and then is just a generally good unit. Your dual carry here is going to be Poppy plus Lulu. Lulu items are going to be the same in Lulu uh, Pantheon reroll, so Blue Buff, Gunblade, Jewel Gauntlet, Guard Breaker. I think the flat AP items are going to be a lot better here as well. So Death Cup and Archangels are going to hold a lot more value due to the fact that you don't have as much flat AP, uh, so keep that in mind. Poppy items, I really like Magic Resist on her due to the fact that she has a lot of armor innately due to her hero augment. I like playing her more of a tank in this comp than a carry, so Dragon's Claw Stoneplate are very good for that. Redemption is also very good to help keep her alive, reduce some of that AoE magic damage. But you can also theoretically go with tank items like Bramble Vest, although I don't love it. Vow is also theoretically an okay option, but you typically want to be using tiers for Lulu, uh, so you're typically not going to be building Vow in this composition. Warmogs is also a solid option, makes you very stable at Poppy 2, so keep that in mind. If you have AD items, they can go on your Nar. Extra AP items can go on your Sona here. Extra tank items can go on your Annie, typically, I believe, is what you're going to be wanting to put your extra tank items on. So yeah, this is a solid comp here if you have the Poppy Carry Augment. In terms of augments for this comp, you typically want Bigger Better Buckler as your hero augment. And then for regular augments, Gadgeting Plus One is going to be very good. It's going to allow you to stabilize really hard in the mid game. Uh, you just don't have to play the Nunu at level 7, so you should be able to easily fit in that 5 Gadgetine. Jeweled Lotus is very good, going to buff up your Lulu damage as well as every other unit's damage. And Second Wind is very good, helps keep your Poppy alive. You can theoretically go Defender Heart and play 4 Defender as well, just drop Alistar for 4 Defender, uh, so that is another option. You could also theoretically go with Heart plus 1 and drop Alistar for 4 Heart to further buff up the Lulu damage. The next comp is a comp that many of you are probably very familiar with if you played a patch ago, and that is going to be LeBlanc Reroll. Now LeBlanc Reroll has kind of fell by the wayside this patch due to the fact that Hacker was nerfed, but I still think with the right setup this comp is very very powerful and can easily win lobbies, you just make sure you need to have the right conditions. Generally you need to have a very good admin for this, so the best admins are going to be AP Combat Start, AP Every 5 Seconds, and AP On Kill. If you have one of those you can definitely consider playing this comp if you have an early LeBlanc. In terms of items for this comp, LeBlanc typically wants Edge of Night plus 2, Deathcap and Archangels are in my opinion her best items, although Jewel Gauntlet, Giant Slayer, are fine as well. I, I typically like to be running two damage items on her, not a healing item, not a mana item. Uh, you can theoretically go Shoujin on her, but I think it's just significantly worse than Edge Knight plus two damage items. In addition, past that, Chalices are very good. Again, you just want to buff your LeBlanc damage as much as possible, give her those free resets. Uh, so Chalices and potentially Zeke's are very good on the Sona. Pike can also run your tank items plus Morello. Morello is very good. And then if you have tank items, a lot of times I like putting on a pike. You can also put tank items on Shen as well. Um, but if, let's say I have like Morello Vow, I really like putting this on pike. Again, Vow is one of pike's best items. Uh, if you can get the pike three tank items, are better on him. If you can't get the pike three tank items, might be a bit better on the Shen. So one adaptation I've actually made since last patch is changing up the comp. Last patch, what I showed you guys was to play four admins with the LeBlanc to buffer up as much as possible. The problem is Hacker has been nerfed. The Omnivamp on Hacker has been completely shredded at 3 Hacker and slightly nerfed at 4 and 5 Hacker. What this means is a 3 Hacker LeBlanc is not going to be reliably healing at all. But we can rectify this by instead of running 3 Hacker is running 4 Hacker. Well how do we do this? Well we play running, uh, we play Riffwalkers. This Riffwalker version actually fits quite nicely here. You can see this board, you just run LeBlanc, Sona, Pike. 
Vex, Jin, Shen, plus an admin, can be any of them. I just have Blitzcrank right here, but you can theoretically run Camille or Warwick, doesn't really matter. And this allows us to get four Hacker, which will basically give us as much healing as the three Hacker LeBlanc did have last patch. And then Zac is also a decent amount of extra frontline, so this variation does not feel that bad at all. There's a couple other variations you can play. You can drop Jin and Vex for four admin. I don't love it unless your admin is like extremely good and you have some other healing source like Celestial Blessing or Thrill of the Hunt. In addition, you can also drop Jin Vex for Morgana plus Aesol. Aesol is just a very good unit. If you have spare AP items, you can potentially uh, put those on Aesol, especially if you can like Chalice the Aesol as well. He does a lot of damage. The nice thing about Aesol in this comp is he's going to help kill those clumps that usually beat the LeBlanc, but I typically prefer this Riftwalker variation just to give the LeBlanc more healing. You really care about LeBlanc 3 in this comp, Sona 3 and Pike 3 are nice bonuses if you can hit them, although they're not that important. When you play this comp, you typically want to roll on 3-2 level 6 to stabilize off of like a LeBlanc 2, and then you're going to level 7 and slow roll at 50 gold for LeBlanc 3, and then once you hit LeBlanc 3, you can start pushing levels again. Of course, this comp fits nicely at level 7. In terms of augments for this comp, Jewel Lotus is very good, going to buff up your LeBlanc damage a lot. Hacker plus 1 is of course very good, going to give her a lot more healing. Celestial Blessing, Thrill of the Hunt are very good, you just want... LeBlanc to be able to tank through stuff and heal through things. Axiom Mark is a great one. It's going to allow her to just get a lot of resets and kill a bunch of stuff. And yeah, those are going to be the best standard augments. In terms of the best hero augments, Aim Assist is by far going to be the best one you can hit. It's just going to buff up LeBlanc the most. At two cost, you can theoretically go with the Camille Support Augment, which is Hex Retribution, or the Pike Support Augment, which is Small Game Hunter. Of course, if you have the Camille one, you just play her over Blitzcrank. In terms of four cost, I don't love the four cost options for this composition. You could theoretically go for Wrath of the Rift, which is the Jin support augment, but it does feel pretty lackluster, so I don't recommend it. I would probably not take a four cost option, but again, if you see a four cost augment, it's going to be either with a three cost or a five cost augment. So if we have a five cost augment, what we can go for is Absolute Corruption, which is the Fiddlesticks carry augment. Sorry, Fiddlesticks support augment. The Fiddlesticks carry augment is like the worst augment in the game. Don't take it. But Absolute Corruption is the Fiddlesticks support augment. And when you take Absolute Corruption, just simply make sure that the Fiddlesticks is the closest unit to your LeBlanc, and it's going to buff her AP a lot. It's actually quite good. The next comp I'd like to talk about is going to be Vex Reroll slash Mascot Reroll. I think this comp is pretty solid right now. It's just a nice A, A- tier comp. It can definitely win games if you hit all your units. The thing with this comp is tank items matter significantly more than your Vex items. So you should be playing this comp when you have tank items, not when you have AP items. There's plenty of other AP comps I talked about in last week's video. Uh, that you can play that will play around the AP items. The idea of this comp is you're going to roll really hard on 3-2 to stabilize. A lot of times I will open fort uh, during stage 2, which if you're unfamiliar, open forting is just when you sell all your units and try and make as much money as possible. Roll down at 3-2 and try and hit like Vex 2, Malphite 2, Alistar 2 to make a nice stable board. You'll typically just play 4 mascot at level 6, so your board will usually just look like Vex plus Malphite plus Alistar plus Nasus plus two other units at level six. Then at level seven, you're typically want to go in and play a board similar to this. You want to play the three Riftwalkers, that way you don't have to play the Nasus for the four mascot. And then we're going to Aesol are just very good units. Aesol makes a nice secondary carry. Honestly, you can carry the Aesol over Vex. Aesol two is a better carry than Vex two, uh, but Vex three, you're probably not going to move items off of. So just keep that in mind. If you're sitting there with like three Vexes and you have an Aesol two, you may want to consider transferring items. But if you're sitting there with like seven Vexes, you may want to just hold out for Vex three, even though Aesol two is a bit stronger at that moment in time. I would say as a default, your tank is going to be Malphite. Best items are going to be Warmogs, Dragon Claw, Stone Plate, Bramble Vest, Redemption. That being said, if you have a lot of Alistars and think you can go for Alistar 3, you can potentially itemize the Alistar as well. In terms of Vex items here, her best item by far is going to be Archangels. I think best in slot Vex is going to be double Archangels plus one. I think Guard, uh, guard Breaker is good, Giant Slayer is good as that last item. Death Cap is solid as well. Uh, so those are all solid options. Of course, Shiv is good in this comp as well due to the fact that it'll buff up your Vex and Aurelian Soul damage, although it's not as necessary if you're running Morgana. Another variation you can do here is you can actually simply just run Ramus over, let's say, the Morgana. You can throw it over the Aesol, but a lot of times you'll lack damage, and you just put tank items on Ramus. Even without the Mascot Spat, you can do this. My absolute favorite variation of this comp, however, though, is when I have a Mascot Spat, what I will do is I will take the Mascot Spat, I will throw it on the Ramus, and then I'll just put those tank items I was talking about earlier, I really like Warmox plus Stoneplate on him, and go Mascot Ramus. When you're playing a variation like this, you can very easily drop this Aurelian Soul for 6 Mascot, although I actually don't love this due to the fact that you lose a lot of damage. What a lot of times I'll actually opt to do is simply just stick in four mascot anyways, um, and instead drop like a random Alistar or Malphite, play a board like this. 
You can also theoretically drop the Jin plus Pike. Another option with this board is you can go Mascot Spat on Pike instead of the Ramus. So you would drop the Ramus, keep this here, you'd put tank items on Malphite, you still run the Alistar, and then again you can still run the Morgana plus Aurelian Soul. And your board would look something like this. You can go Mascot Spat on Pike, this is a great default here. And then you would probably just put in Nasus over Morgana. Uh, this variation is pretty good. It allows you to get that nice secondary damage from Aurelian Soul, but still have Mascot Spat on Pike. You can also start throwing your tank items on Pike as well. Again, his best item is going to be Val, but you can just throw any tank items. I've seen people literally throw all their tank items on Pike, front row him, and just have him be the primary tank of a comp. He's going to be casting a lot with the six mascot, with the mascot spat and two tank items. So this is a very uh, good viable option. In terms of augments for this comp, the best one in my opinion is going to be mascot crest, although mascot heart is also quite good. Again, if I have mascot crest, I'm typically putting it on either the Pike or the Remus. In addition, First Aid Kit is probably the best augment you can hit outside of that due to the fact that you have so much healing already, so First Aid Kit's going to be very good. Riftwalker Crest is solid, it's going to buff up your Zac, also potentially allows you to drop the Jin if you would like to, allow you to hit some variations a bit easier. Ascension's very good, you have a very tanky comp, so I really like Ascension. Those are probably my favorite non-hero augments. In terms of hero augments, you can go for Rock Solid, which is the Malphite carry augment, put tank items on him, and have him be your frontliner. You can also just go with Guardian Spirit, which is the Malphite Support Augment, should make your whole board a lot tankier. At 3 cost, you typically want to be taking the Vex Support Augment, the Vex Carry Augment isn't the greatest. Another option is you can go with the Alistar Carry Augment, which is Behemoth. Behemoth is going to be very good. If you can potentially go for Alistar 3, Behemoth will make your Alistar a very, very strong tank in this comp. So if you're sitting there with some Alistars and you think you can go for Alistar 3, potentially pick, take Behemoth and go for Alistar as your tank. In terms of 4 cost Augment, your best ones are going to be the Aurelian Soul Augments. Typically, uh, Extinction Event or Impact Velocity are very good. Again, I love Extinction Event, just make sure you have your items on him if you have that Augment, I think it's really powerful. At 5 cost, you're typically just going to take either Nunu Augment. Both are fine, I actually kind of prefer the Nunu Carry Augment in this comp. The fact that he goes fast actually makes him quite tanky as he gets out of uh, people's sights. Uh, of course, you typically always want to be playing Nunu whenever you hit this guy. But yeah, at 5 cost, you're typically taking one of the Nunu Augments. Alright, and the final composition I'd like to talk about today is what you play when you have the Built Different Augment. Now, Built Different is a very interesting augment because I believe according to Mort, it's like the least picked augment in the entire game. But if you ask any high elo player, they think this augment is quite good. The, so, uh, the, the gold Built Different augment is pretty good, I think it's like a 4.5, 4.6 average, but most top challenger players think it's pretty solid. And the Prismatic Build Different augment is actually very good, and like GM Plus it has good stats. I forget the exact ones, but it's like a low 4. So Build Different is pretty popular among high elo players. And I think part of it is due to the fact that most people don't know how to play this comp, so what I'm going to do is talk about how you play this. Now, the best carry with Build Different is generally considered to be Twisted Fate, although Samira, Misfortune, and Jin are other acceptable options as well. What you typically want to be doing is putting your AP items on Twisted Fate. You're going to be going Static Shiv, plus two typically. Death Cap, Giant Slayer, Guard Breaker are good. Archangels is good. Don't love Jewel Gauntlet because you don't have a bunch of other AP sources in this comp. Hand of Justice is fine as well. Your tech damage items are typically going to be going on Samira. Deathblade, Last Whisper, Runon's Hurricane, Giant Slayer, Infinity Edge, Hand of Justice, Gunblade, those are all good on her. Misfortune can take any other AP items as well. Uh, so if you have spare AP items, they can go on her. Shoujin's great on her. If you hit Misfortune 2 before Twisted Fate 2, you can honestly just throw them on her. Typically, Misfortune needs, kind of needs Shoujin to be a primary carry, but with Build Different, she actually has enough attack speed that you can get away with no Shoujin on her. If you hit a Jin 2, you can also just throw the Samira items on Jin 2 and he does a pretty good amount of work in this comp. The idea of this comp here is we're going to be running the ace units because they don't really need the trait to function, um, so they're going to get good build different value. Twisted Fate also just generally gets good build different value. He scales quite well off of attack speed, and the build different attack speed is better than the duelist attack speed. So we're really running units that don't rely on traits that much. Garen's just going to be your best potential frontliner. He doesn't need Defender to be good. He's just going to sit here and CC their entire board. You're just going to throw your tank items on him. Val's probably the best one. But you can throw any other tank on him as well, Warmogs, Dragon's Claw, Stoneplate, Sunfire, etc. Margot is just a good unit to throw in for the free CC plus Shred. Fiddlesticks is another great unit to throw in here as well. Pike is actually very good on this board. Pike skills pretty well for the HP and attack speed. A lot of times he'll cast two or three times with no items in built different. So Pike's just great to run, especially because he doesn't rely on his traits at all. One misconception I see people make is that threats are bad and built different due to the fact that they're not getting benefits from the built different, because uh, obviously built different only affects non-threat units, but actually threats are better in built different than not built different. The reason for this is there's an opportunity cost every time you run a threat unit. That opportunity cost is you're not running a unit that's giving you synergy. 
However, in built different, you don't want synergies anyways. So you no longer have that opportunity cost of running a threat unit. So threat units actually become a bit better in built different. Of course, you don't want your whole team to be threats or else you have no augment. But if you're running a couple threats, it's completely fine. This means Aurelian Soul is fine if you want to run him. Ramus is a good uh, supplemental frontline option. And then Morgana Fiddlesticks obviously are great. Urgot's another solid option in this comp as well. I have Mordekaiser here. He's great with these ace units, but you don't have to run him. But if you can get like a Mordekaiser 2 with AP items, that's typically going to be your win condition. Syndra is actually very interestingly good in this comp. Typically, you're not running Syndra without Echo. Uh, but you can just throw in a Syndra with the attack speed she should be throwing in a bunch of units. Of course, if you want another good frontliner to run, you can just run an Echo here. Shouldn't be running Echo and Syndra at the same time. Uh, but Echo is great to run if you just want some supplemental frontline. Now, in terms of augments with this comp, you typically want to go for generic combat augments. Exiles is very good. Jewel Lotus is very good. Celestial Blessing, Throw of the Haunt are solid. Uh, so that type of generic combat augment is generally me what you're going for in this composition. However, hero augments pose a very interesting question. Typically in comps, when you take a hero augment, what you want to do is you want to tailor your traits, which if you don't know how to do that, go and watch my video on augments, and I discuss it there. You want to tailor your traits to get the units that fit your composition. The problem is, in Built Different, we're probably taking this at 2-1, and we're not going to have any traits on our board. So what are we going to do for Hero Augment? We could potentially just get full random Hero Augment, uh, but that doesn't sound ideal. One thing we could do is just go full random Hero Augment and try and take a Threat Augment, right? We could take one of the Morgana Augments, we could take one of the Ramus Augments, well, the, the Ramus Carry Augment's probably not that good, but the Ramus Support Augment should be decent in an AD Lobby. Um, the Morgana Augments are probably a bit better, though. We could even theoretically go for something like an Aurelian Soul Augment, but using him as your carry in this comp is a little bit awkward, uh, due to the fact that, of course, he's not benefiting from the build different. You could go with the Atrox Support Augment as well. Those are all fine options, but that's also a little unreliable as you're not guaranteed to hit those. Here's what I typically like to do when I play this comp. At 3-1, I like to throw Draven on my board. So when I have build different, I usually will hold a Draven during Stage 2, so that way I can play him on my board at 3-1. He's going to put Ace in, and at 3-1, you're not going to you know, have any other Ace units, but you'll just lose the build different on your Draven for the one round, and you'll have Ace in. What you can then do is pick the Ruthless Blade Augment at 3-2, if you see a 2 cost. If you get offered Ruthless Blades, you can now just either drop the Misfortune, the Samira, or the Mordekaiser in your final board, and prioritize Infinity Edge and Jewel Gauntlet on your carry, and this is just going to allow their spells to 100% crit every time. So that's a solid option in this comp. Of course, if you don't see a 2-cost augment at 3-2 and you see 4-cost augments, then you can just take one of the Misfortune or Samira augments, right? At 4-1, what I typically like to do is I like to put in 2 Defender. I'm going to lose the built different value on my frontline units for that round, but that's fine because it's going to allow me to tailor for the Garen Support augment, which is My Sword is Your Shield. Then typically at 4-2, I'll just take My Sword is Your Shield, one of the best potential augments for this composition, uh, and it's just really good. So I always put in 2 Defender at 4-1, and I put in Draven at 3-1 typically. So keep those in mind. If you made it to the end, I would like to thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my content. I have a bunch more stuff coming, uh, so see you next video.